if i'm doing something i want to be the best or what's the point if mm-hmm. i am choosing my own race if i am choosing what i am going to do and mm-hmm. then i'm aiming for mediocrity that's mm-hmm. like not living to your potential and mm-hmm. that's the worst a man or a woman can do to themselves mm-hmm. if you have the potential if you feel that you can do it then go for it then mm-hmm. you will have to make some sacrifices and stuff like that but aiming for that aiming for the top is what your target should be you achieve it or not if you don't aim it you will never achieve it hello and welcome welcome to my channel say something with mads where every week we have a youth change maker we love to hear from youth their opinion their perspective their dreams their struggles and challenges so today we have mudit mudit is joining me from delhi and uh, mudit has uh, we were speaking about uh, our pre interview i had a talk with him and he has a lot of interesting things to share with you about his journey about his dreams about his entrepreneurial journey and about uh, what where he sees himself it's very interesting in uh, as in the course of interview we will start unfolding the questions will come but first and foremost welcome mudit how are you feeling today hi ma'am thank first of all thank you for having me on your show and i'm feeling great i love the energy and you know we just had a pretty great conversation i hope our listeners also enjoy the conversation we have yes absolutely so mudit uh, tell me about little bit about your school about your college about your parents the business i know you come from a business family a little bit about who mudit is and also maybe you can add uh, what's the meaning of your name i always am very intrigued by the meaning of everybody's name so over to you yeah definitely so <laughs> if i talk about myself hi guys i'm mudit gupta I'm 21 years old. I did my schooling from Delhi Public School. I guess all of you know about yes, DPS. Yes, it's yes, all yes, around yes. the globe. Uh, talking about my plus one and plus two, I did. I had commerce in my plus one, and I did my graduation from Delhi University. Uh, if I talk about my family background, I come from a typical Banya business family. uh and yeah we are into stationery and we export stationery in the uk us africa and australia oh wow so uh, uh, you have got a glimpse of who mudit is now the topic is dream big and mudit always believes that what's the harm why should we not dream big and the first thing when i spoke to him he said that i have a dream i want to be on the forbes top 30 list or top 10 list so uh, and i think people don't understand me yet but i'm um that's my dream so i think that's going to be our topic today uh take us uh, to the thought behind it what the, everybody aspires to be on the forbes list yes we have been seeing but so many few people will say that i want to be there it, to hear you say at 21 that i want to be there what is it that motivated you and how is there anyone particular whom you look up to from the forbes list and said oh i i follow that person and he's there and i want to be there what is the thought behind it yeah so uh, basically i'll just correct that i will be there i don't want to be there i will be there, will be there. yes of yeah, course i believe the that the words we speak matter a lot now yes. talking about my inspiration to be honest there's no one in that list that i'm inspired from like i okay. look up to them i see mm-hmm. how they work but if i talk about my inspiration that's virat kohli okay. uh, because i believe that the excellence that he has you know achieved in his particular field that attitude that if i'm doing something i want to be the best or what's the point if mm-hmm. i am choosing my own race if i am choosing what i am going to do and mm-hmm. then i'm aiming for mediocrity that's mm-hmm. like not living to your potential and mm-hmm. that's the worst a man or a woman can do to themselves mm-hmm. if you have the potential if you feel that you can do it then go for it then mm-hmm. you will have to make some sacrifices and stuff like that but aiming for that aiming for the top is what your target should be you achieve it or not if you don't aim it you will never achieve it that's for sure so tell me you and your friends you have a circle of friends um you are also an entrepreneur so you meet so many people you think this 
uh, reaching and manifesting and I will do it. Is it very prevalent among the youth today? Do they plan that much ahead that I want to see themselves? Or you are blessed to have a circle of friends, somebody who is also shares your views? Or is it something people look up to and say, hey, kya bol rahe? so what is it that you faced when you share this with your peer? Yeah, so basically they'll definitely laugh. Yeah. Uh, that's what today's youth gonna do. It's just okay. like if a things get viral, if a th things getting, you know, if people if, if people is appreciating something, they're gonna like it. That's what the Gen Z uh, mindset is. So mm -hmm. manipulation is in trend right now, but mm -hmm. actually they're not practicing it. So there's this boxer Conor McGregor, and I uh, so I saw his video where he was talking about manifesting. Where he used to manifest that today I'm going to watch a movie, and you know, like when I go to that parking lot, the first parking uh, spot is going to be empty for me. Empty, yeah. And that's how he practiced manifestation. So manifestation is a very good exercise because what you think is what you create. It's all, uh, you know, the frequencies and vibrations. That's the way we can communicate with the universe. And even if we talk about the famous Shah Khan dialogue, agar kisi cheez ko puri se chaho. so that's yeah. what is manifestation. If you Correct. believe in it, if you believe in it and if you practice it properly, you'll get it. But yeah, uh, so, it's it's okay. People won't uh, agree with it. Yeah. So your manifestation means different thing to different people. Somebody just morning, evening, think about it. Or somebody just knows that I have written it or somewhere in journal may like that. And or you just say it every day in the mind before you go to sleep. Before you once you wake up, there are different techniques. Do you practice manifestation? Uh, very, um, uh, I would say very uh, rigorously. Or is it that, okay, you have said it and the universe is going to take it or you speak about it a lot? So my particular way is that I'm obsessed with what I do. Okay. So if I want to achieve something, I'm obsessed with it. I don't care if I have, don't have to sleep or if I have to give up on some events or stuff like that. So mm -hmm. obsession is my way. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I just do positive affirmations. I never speak negative about something I want to achieve. That's mm -hmm. a trend I have seen in the Gen Z or with my friends. Okay. So once you brought about your entrepreneurship and know that you have you, uh, your entrepreneur journey, how did it start? Who are, uh, which is your company? What are you doing? And do you have a team or uh, are your parents into your um, uh, your organization or what you have started? Just let us know about this journey of yours. Um, so if I talk about my entrepreneurial journey, I started a uh, affiliate marketing website in class nine. So oh. Affiliate marketing is pretty famous right now, but at that time it wasn't. So oh. I did that to earn some extra bucks. I wanted to be financially independent. So that's okay. how my entrepreneurial spirit, you know, that stint started. But okay. since I was from a business background family and a typical Banya family, I have always had business conversations during dinner time with my dad. I mm. used to go to my, uh, our manufacturing unit. I used to see how things are done. I used mm. to see how my dad is talking to clients on the phone. So that's mm -hmm. something I guess I inherited during the, during those conversations and right. everyone, all my relatives. So I have a very big family. My mm -hmm. grandfather has five brothers. So, mm -hmm. and we all are connected. We live in this, like in the same area in a five kilometer radius. So mm -hmm. all of them are doing different businesses. So I, I had a lot of exposure uh, right. talking about my businesses. Like I said, how, which was like, that was my first business. I closed it down. I did earn some good money talking about right now. I have an ed tech company, Atmasat enterprises that's yes. focused on the development of children uh, or okay. development of soft skills in them because what okay. I feel even coming from DPS uh, it's a very big brand right and even in my class if there were 50 children in a class only five got the opportunity of actually practicing those soft skills and actually you know have that exposure and the rest when I went to college in D mm. I could see that in a batch of 2000, only 10 to 15 were employable. Even during the uh, placement setting setup, people weren't ready for the interviews. They didn't have, they just lack those skills, basic oh. skills like negotiations, public speaking, the confidence, like right now I'm sitting here, I'm talking to you. We are talking for the first time, right? And I'm not mm. hesitating. That's a basic mm. skill that one should have. And yes. due to COVID, the current uh, kids, 
social media and the screen time the human interaction is getting more artificial so that's something which i feel has a great potential and uh, that's like a big business out there and at the same time i'm creating an impact right this is something uh, really i have been thinking for a very long time that you need to do business with a social uh, angle right you are giving something to somebody you are making a tangible difference if somebody is eventually of course any product anything is going to make a difference but these are things when you see something is lacking and you are filling the gap yes mudit um what do you uh, if i have to tell you that you are an uh, educational education minister of india and you have a free hand to change anything about any one thing about the education system of india coming from dpas all the pressure and all looking back what would that one thing you want to change first of all i would you know there are a few changes i have actually thought about this question in my free time so if i get this opportunity i'll make a more holistic uh, curriculum where are uh, the you know like i don't know how but the focus would be on problem solving rather than rote learning and i won't remove rote learning completely because i see indians excelling in all the fields so mm. we might be doing something right mm. but i would want to you know just bring in that and just uh, bring in problem solving there because that's something i feel we are lacking in our education system i would give this i would give sports the importance it deserves because mm. it helps in a lot of character development mm. that's what i have personally experienced and that's something that should be dealt with properly even coming from dps our pt periods were taken by the maths teacher yeah it's always this was not done so that's the under if not if for the first time sports are important and you know there should be proper sports education in the school and not a physical education book where you are learning about the muscles and stuff there should be proper sports guide and cool stuff like that and you actually grow up playing a sport so Absolutely. yeah yeah That's very beautiful and you know when uh, when we were in school some 30 40 years back we had the same issue and now you are talking about the same issue so what is changing with the new education policy so many things are written still math science will uh, english will take precedence over other subjects or other curricular uh, extra curricular activity everything will shut down during your exam time everything will be taken away as you said sports so i think that that's nothing is going to change still when you're talking about uh experiential learning right you said that more skill development more problem solving we do have these kind of questions now embedded in the subject are they actually helping i don't see it we have no they're not uh, see uh what i have seen is that people are focusing on thing on this stuff but it is that it's not being done in the school so it's happening only in the tier 1 what you are talking about and that to in a very limited section and i guess that's our sample size because we come from that section but mm-hmm. when i worked in this sector uh even basic education just you know they're not getting that in school they're going outside the school for everything mm-hmm. even for the basic education now there's this tuition for everything and that's yeah. like pointless i never had a single tuition in my life mm-hmm. i have never taken a tuition that's mm-hmm. why i was able to do so much stuff because i used to study in school mm-hmm. i used to had fun in school i used to come home i used to go for a sports class i used to you know play in the park for two hours i don't see kids doing that anymore so that was like even my cousins they come from school they have their english class they have their maths class then the science class then the social sciences it's 9:30 they have their food they're on your, on their phone so that's like that's not the childhood i would have ever dreamt of so mm. you need to have that holistic approach and you know you need to cut down on the rote learning and have that problem solving in the school itself so mm-hmm. right now it's all outside school there's no point of you know what the school is doing as of now mudit but you you mentioned something very interesting and i want to ask one definitely i want to uh, the uh, the audience will be identifying with this when you said that that uh, if you didn't go for tuitions and you had so much time and you were very you know you were 
you were you didn't have a burnout like you were doing everything together and you were fresh during your exams you were not uh, burdened by tests after tests after tests but you as an example in front of your cousins they are not able to do what you did why are you not able to motivate people and convince uh, their parents that see i could do it people would say oh you are intelligent that's not a, a term people want to why everybody can do it right you need to convince what is it that people are still so afraid of taking it on themselves and sectutions jane se sab kuch ho jayega so i'll just uh, like i don't interfere much uh, in the close family because i've seen parents have become a lot paranoid so yeah. if the kids go to the park will be like mitti mein mat khelne do theek hai and i remember playing cricket right. coming home with like i had cards and stuff like that like it's it was okay my mom used to be worried she used to clean them up and she was like ki dhang se khelo dhyan se khelo but it was not like that i had that like i used to cycle gir aa ja to dar pad but then they just stop me the next day but right now i see the parents are so paranoid that i just don't speak anything in between they'll be like tumne kar liya you were good at it so is is it till the time the system uh, uh, moving on to a question which is which is a topic which is very close to my heart and i want to know from youth what are they talking about what are they thinking about uh the big word sustainability what does it even mean to you how what are you doing about it from your end or do you think it's not for me for the government or are you thinking about this how to make something which is for for the unsdg goals or doing at your level something about sustainability so i actually think the uh, like sustainability is a topic which i have given a lot of thought about i did this from a business point of view at start because Very that good. is the sector yes. uh, where you can build a big business easily right now because there's a less competition and the government is supporting you mm. but like since we have an ev at our home so uh and even my family you know like they believe in this because the krishna consciousness that we should support like protect the nature and stuff like that so i believe that every person has a role like you should not waste water in mm. i am living in delhi right now there is more like the air out there is oh, so yes. that is uh i can like i have cough from the past one month and right now even diwali is not here even though there's a ban i know the situation is going to get worse so mm. we are going to create a situation where we won't be able to live in the environment it's harmful no matter how much you technologize the things and you know how much yeah. infrastructure is built you need to do it sustainably and air Let is something which you have no control over and it is going to be so toxic so harmful it is reducing the the life expectancy by almost 10 years is well we are right now we are it's equivalent to 32 degrees a day yes so that's like too much and you if we don't take a step and be like kya hi farak padega then you can't blame the government that's right. as simple as that the government is playing a, you know the role but you i feel that that's something an individual can manage like right like right. basic just on that good to hear awareness is the main thing read more about it uh, read how how the uh, uh, policy makers are talking even people who are on different podcasts have spoken some very very interesting ideas what we can do everyday life to change and become microplastics are everywhere we can reduce that microplastics from our diet from our even a simple coffee cup you know the coffee when we go to starbucks or anywhere insist on having it in a tea cup like proper uh, ceramic cup or take it from home because you know, the reusable one which they can wash yeah but the otherwise the, even the small cup what we drink water we don't even think that okay it's paper cup so it's better than plastic no it is lined up with such fine thin layers of plastic which are microplastics which are absolutely harmful so i couldn't help but talk about this here all right my next question to you would be what why or uh, what do you think about people networking youth networking with people making connections with people making contact with people They, everybody is talking about i have so many people who follow me i have so many uh, linkedin may 40000 people are there um this etc 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 
how about having some authentic connections what is it that people are talking is it always about give and take okay i will like your post will you like my post okay i am following you will you follow me there is always so much of give and take it is never how how difficult it is in today's time to form very authentic uh, network ne- people to get connections in a world where you get you are you know paid more for the number of followers you have and where you know the lines like your network is your net worth it's very difficult to you know not try to connect with more people but like you mentioned that authentic human relationships that you need it's not yes. that you need to have you need them yes it's, it's a basic human uh necessity that if you don't have them even at the top even if you reach at the top you mm. feel that you would be okay alone it's you not going to be because at the are going to be stuff you you might just be not well and you you might need someone beside you so mm-hmm. it's pretty important to have that authentic relationships i am someone who's networking all the time right but still uh even if like let's say i have my cat this month but i have a group of people if they call me right now i know that they're calling me they need me they don't they won't disturb me and mm. if call one go no matter what so that's the kind of relationships i feel are getting a bit rare which is mm. quite difficult for me to understand because i have got them but mm. i can see people not having them it's, it's something one should work on they should mm. not take their people for granted and you know just keep maintain those relations that's something yeah. really important that is very 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 good point you made is uh your childhood friends are your anchor you make friends and they are your lifeline even if they are not in your same position economic strata as yours maybe they are not uh they are not growing as much as you are do you leave them behind no you still maintain connection you just give them a hand and pull them whenever they need right so with I them the childhood mudit is still there like i go back yeah. to those for the yeah. fourth class where we used to you know we still like with them i'm the same i am the me like i'm not someone trying to portray myself or you know i'm not, not just talking always about work i am tension free no matter how difficult the situation is i feel relaxed and i'm happy that's the the Absolutely. goal so yeah the next question is about the book section uh, do you have your favorite book do any podcast anything which you listen to anything which you uh think that okay i i have to listen to this guy uh, regularly to get motivated is there also a favorite movie of yours if you can name three together yeah so if i talk about the book i'll say like people are going to say books like atomic habits and stuff like that uh rich dad poor dad is a book that ha- that yes. shaped my yes. career in the like shaped my professional journey it helped me start but if i talk about dogla pan i have mm. the book right here so mm. by ashni grover it is that i relate more to this book because he is an indian entrepreneur he is from delhi he did his iit then he went to i am ahmedabad so i can relate to him because it's an indian content and i feel that's lacking out there mm. uh people more indian entrepreneurs need to share their stories and i guess with shark tank that's going to change yes. uh talking about uh the podcast so i listen to a lot of different podcasts from the north american region because okay, i am exactly. into a bit like just a random podcast and maybe the joe rogan podcast and okay. um, so i d- do listen to a lot of podcast differently and there's this st or uh, this this person he's he bring in people who have you know like who have a good vision and stuff like that so i listen to them uh, that's because they the web3 sector and the stuff like that is more booming over there but if i talk about india i uh like listening to ranveer alabadia though a lot of his podcasts are getting up you know the quality is decreasing but he brings people you know like he's bringing people i used to idolize as a child so it's just that i would want to know their side of the story and he's mm-hmm. bringing people who are influential and who, who have achieved right. some... yeah from so, this yeah um now is the time when you get to ask me a question this is a role reversal go ahead and ask me what you want uh, to ask it could be anything yeah, so you have been taking a lot of podcasts and talk, like you have been talking to a lot of people and i feel like talking to people you learn something and you know just every day so every day. 
what are those three to four things that you have seen that someone like me or in general people of my age would benefit from a lot like top three learnings because i feel that since you're talking to people my age and a lot of other people you have a perspective from a lot of perspectives yes top 3 okay everyone i speak to the first thing which i get which i did not expect and which is something very um, humbling for me is universally for everyone is that they are so there is no inhibitions now people are ready to share their stories had it been me i would not say so many things openly okay but i would say only few lines people are ready to talk that's something good maybe they don't get to talk or maybe they have so much inside they want to share our interview sometimes go on till 1 and 1/2 hour we have to cut it down to 30 minutes so that is something which i feel people want to speak they they need somebody to listen okay that is the young people that's one thing the second thing i feel is the connection if you make genuine connections if you are not there for a uh, commercial purpose if you know that you are not there uh, what is the end result i am going to get and you just open yourself out uh, you will make some beautiful conversations and that is where uh, that is that is something which is making me go the third thing which i think very very important is uh, today's youth every one of them are such good uh they are good at content writing marketing uh using ai they are many many uh, skills which i think are very important they are there they are grabbing everything they don't want to be left behind they are hustling everyone is hustling nobody is dependent ha mere daddy ke paas paise hai nobody everybody wants to make a mark on their own with the, with the developing all the new new techs tech savvy i would say everything everything new they want to learn and i think they are using it to best of their advantage so that is common among everyone whether we are talking to a guy in africa in zimbabwe nigeria i speak to guy in uganda he also is talking about they don't have internet connections but he is talking about ai using it um whatever they have what beautiful creatives they make i said how do you make it so i have learned this from somewhere i mean this is really amazing coming from such um schools and colleges where they don't have money to pay but they are into social marketing and all and i think that's amazing quality the wonderful way to end this i i, I will remember this the way you narrated it and it's really makes sense to everyone yeah that lot of chatter lot of chatter goes on in the chatter goes on in your mind also like okay lots of time yes no yes no ye karna nahi karna nahi karna so that like shut them and then focus right 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 okay we had a great conversation and thank you for this thank you mudit for being here today and um, yes with this we wrap up this uh, uh, today's episode and see you again next week with another guest and do subscribe to this channel and this is very very important that you subscribe because this is the only youth channel i know of who is giving opportunity to the youth and we need to grow it as big as possible thank you so much see you next time and good night and bye bye